Hello, I'm Mark from Excel Off The Grid. In this video, we're looking at how we can create a running total inside an Excel table. Now, what should be quite a simple scenario, well, there's actually quite a lot of pitfalls, a lot of things that can catch us out. But hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know the best methods and which methods you should use. So why don't you download the example file and then you can work along with the examples in this video. So once you've done that, if you're ready, let's get started. Tables are one of the best features of Excel. Because of how tables are constructed, it means we might have to think slightly differently when we create running totals in a table than if we we're using standard ranges. Here we are in Excel and you can see the data that we will be working with. Our goal is to create a running total of the values in the value column. And we want to make sure that that running total calculates correctly, even when rows are added, deleted, or perhaps even when that table is sorted. Let's start here with normal cell references and method number one, which is where we take the cell above plus a value. So this is quite a common method when we use standard cell references. All we would do is enter our formula. So in the formula bar, I'll type equals D1 plus, and then select C2. Tables have what are known as calculated columns, which means by default, each formula is copied automatically into the other rows inside that column. So when I press return, that formula should copy down into all of the other rows. So I press return and unfortunately we get the hash value error. And this occurs because running total is a text value. And it's not possible to add a text value to a number value using simple addition. However, there are a few ways around this. So for example, we could treat this as a sum function. Now the sum function will ignore text automatically. So if I enter the sum of D2 and C3 and press return, that will then create a running total. However, this method causes us problems because what happens when we delete a row? So I'll delete row four, and as you can see, it then creates a hash ref error. So if we are creating a running total in Excel, we cannot use the cell above plus the value as a method because it breaks if we delete a row. Okay, now let's move on and look at method number two. This is where we use a mix of absolute and relative referencing. So let's try this here. So in the formula bar, I'll type equals the sum. I want cell C2. I'll then enter a colon and then select C2 again. But this time we want to lock in one of those cell references. So I press F4 and now that's added the dollars to turn that into an absolute reference. So when I press return, that will then be copied into all of the rows below. Perfect, we now have a running total inside our table. If I double click on any one of those cells, you can see that that now creates an expanding range for each subsequent row. And actually, if I delete row four, it doesn't cause us any problems at all. It still calculates when we delete a row. However, while this method looks like it's working, it causes us a problem when we add new rows. So down at the bottom of my table, I'm just going to enter the value of 100. My table will expand automatically, but it will also cause problems with our running total. So you can see here in cell D17, we have the value of 1030, but 900 plus 30 is not 1030. And actually, if we come and look at this calculation, we'll see that it's referencing that entire column. And if we were to add another row onto the bottom, once again, that range is expanding for every subsequent item that's added. So this method of using a mix of absolute and relative cell references won't work for us either. Instead, let's take a look at structured referencing. And we'll see this using method number three. In the previous section, we identified that sum ignores any text values. Now, given that the header row of a table is always text, even if there is a number that's entered into that header row, it's always treated as text. Not just that, but the header row of a table is always an absolute row reference. Therefore, using structured references, 
you can actually create a rolling total just using the sum function. So in here, I'll type equals the sum, open bracket, and I'll select the header row. I'll then enter a colon, and then I will select the specific row that I'm trying to create my rolling total to. I'll close that bracket, and as always, as soon as I press return, it'll copy those values down. Perfect, we now have a rolling total once again. If I double click on one of those cells, you can see how that's structured. So this blue section here refers to this absolute cell reference, which is cell C1 or the header row of our table. We then have a colon, which is the range operator. Then we have the value, which is the specific row that we have the intersection with. So as we move down our table, we create an increasing range for which we want to sum. So normally we might get to see a box around our entire range, but because of the way we have constructed it, we have our start cell and our last cell, and then that is joined together using a colon. So all that means is we get to see both those cells individually, but that still creates that full range. If we delete a row out of this table, it doesn't cause us any problems. Equally, if we add a value onto the bottom, our values calculate correctly and it doesn't cause us any problems. It appears that this is the perfect method. However, I feel that using the header row in this way makes it more of a visual solution than a data solution. By which I mean that in other parts of Excel, such as Power Query or Power Pivot, it's not possible to select a header row. Therefore, that header row isn't really part of our data concept. So while I know this method works, Conceptually, I'm not sure it's the best solution that we have. Instead, let's move on to method four and see if we've got another method that works even better. In Excel, the index function is a magic function because it can do so many different things. Let me just show you an example. And this is what we're going to be using inside this method. So if I type equals, enter the index function, open bracket, select my value column, enter a comma and then press one and close that bracket. What this will do is select the first value from that column. So in every one of those instances, it returns 20. If I were to change that to two, it would return the second value in that column. So that means using index and the sum functions together, we can again create a running total, but this time without having to reference the header row. So equals the sum of the index from the first row and enter a colon and then select the row that we want to sum down to. I'll close that bracket, press return, and now we have a rolling total using the sum and index functions. If we delete a row, it doesn't cause any problems. If we add a row, Again, it doesn't cause any problems. This, I think, is probably the best solution that we have. If in your scenario, you want a running total with criteria, let's see how we can achieve that using index and some ifs. And we'll do this inside method five. So here in cell D2, I'll type equals. I'll use the sum ifs function. The first argument is the sum range. So our first range is the index from the value column. And I want the first record or the first row. And I've got a colon. And then I can select the specific row that I'm summing down to. I'll then enter a comma, which then takes us to our second argument of the sumifs function, which is the criteria range. Again, we'll use the same method as we used before. So index of the item column, the first row, enter a colon down to the row that we're summing down to. I'll enter a comma, which then brings us to the criteria argument. And again, I'll select the item column, and then close that bracket and press return. Now our numbers seem a bit jumbled here, so let's just check that this has calculated correctly. So we have the value of alpha there, which has a value of 20. 
we have the value of alpha down here, which has a value of 80. So therefore the running total of alpha should be 100 over here in cell D12, which it is. We then have 60 down here in row 15. So the running total of those three should come to 160, which it does. So therefore this method of sum ifs and index works to give us a running total with criteria. So there you have it, lots of options to achieve the same result, but also a lot of pitfalls. The methods using standard referencing cannot guarantee the correct values when adding or deleting rows. So I think we should discount those. The sum and header row method works, but conceptually with referencing a header row, I kind of feel like it's not the best option. For me, the sum and index method is my preferred choice. It's flexible and it provides everything that we need. Well, that's it from me. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Also, if you want to learn how you can automate Excel to put your work onto autopilot, then go to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy for my training program. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.